an alliance of Orthodox Christianity and Islam to remain faithful to the truth which has come from, one of, from above and to resist falsehood and evil and the betrayal of truth and the corruption of truth and to resist and to combat and to respond to injustice because injustice cannot be compatible with truth and to respond to oppression because oppression is not and cannot be a part of truth and so history will not end with a clash of civilizations rather history will end with a clash between those who are faithful to the truth and those who betray the truth having said that we want to now proceed to share with you our view that Jerusalem is at the heart of the end of history. That the clash between those who are faithful to the truth and those who betray the truth, that clash is based on Jerusalem. It is Jerusalem which defines that clash. And uh, if you will excuse my language, the schoolboy who is now the president of the United States of America, and there are many, many Americans who will agree with me that he is a schoolboy, particularly the American diplomatic service, particularly the American diplomatic service. The schoolboy who is now the President of the United States of America has just unwittingly, unwittingly delivered an event in the formal United States recognition of Jerusalem as the capital of the State of Israel. He has just delivered to us an event which will now define better than ever before the end of history and the clash which is to occur. How so? How so? Long before the United States of America was born, I believe they were born just about two, three hundred years ago, the Christian religion has been in the world. Christianity has been here for 2,000 years. And every Christian will know that Jerusalem is the most important city in the world for a Christian who is a Christian. But not all Christians are Christians anymore, you know. There are those Christians who follow Jesus, the son of the Virgin Mary, and there are others who are now following Santa Claus. So we now, we now turn to that part of the Christian world which is still faithful to Jesus, the son of Mary. And they are the ones who recognize Jerusalem as the most important city of all for them, as Christians. Surely the schoolboy would have known that. The most important city of the world for a Jew is Jerusalem. For it was there in Jerusalem that the prophet David, we call him Nabi Dawood alayhi salam established a kingdom 
And the Lord God ordered him, gave him orders. Listen to the order. Ya Dawood, O David, Inna ja'alnaka khalifatan fil ard. We are appointing you to a position of ruler on earth. You must now rule. You must now govern. You must now establish law. Fahkum bayna nasi bil haq. And so David established rule, established the state. Let the conduct of state, let your statecraft, let your system of law and governance be based on the truth which has come from me. Those are the words. Every Jew knows that. And then came his son, Solomon, we call him Nabi Suleiman alayhi salam. And with him, that state became the ruling state in the world with Jerusalem as its capital. Every Jew recognizes Jerusalem as the most important city in the world for him. Did the schoolboy not know that? Did he not teach it to him before he became president of the United States? What about Jerusalem and the world of Islam? I have something to share with you tonight that you probably would be surprised to learn. Our prophet Allah's blessings be upon him is talking about the end times and about the sequence of events that will occur in the end time and this is what he said he said Umranu Baytil Maqdis the word Jerusalem is not there we call it Baytul Maqdis but it's the same thing when Jerusalem is flourishing, is center stage, is built up using the analogy of construction, built up, flourishing, center stage. At that time, he said, look to see Yatrib, Kharabu Yatrib, that Yatrib would be destroyed using the terminology of construction meaning in a state of forlorn desolation with no role whatsoever to play in the world Yatrib of course is that city to the north of Mecca which today is popularly known as Medina Mecca is the most important city in the world for a Muslim, for an Arab. So why should he, why should he refer to Yatrib and not to Mecca? When Jerusalem is flourishing, center stage in the world, Yatrib will have no status whatsoever. Answer, because Mecca also will have a status less than Yatrib. So in the end time, Makkah has no role to play for a Muslim. In the end time, Yatrib or Medina has no role to play for a Muslim. In the end time, it is Jerusalem which is the most important city of all. And then he went on to say, and I hope these words of mine reach to Turkey, can you take it please to them? Kharabu Yatrim Khurujul Malhama Ah, Malhama, you know it. You call it Armageddon. Armageddon. The Great War. 
He called it a war in which 99% of those who fight would be killed. 99 out of every 100 would be killed. You call it Armageddon. We call it the Malhama. And that Malhama has not as yet taken place. Perhaps you might want to tell that to Turkey for me. The Armageddon has not as yet taken place. There has never been a war in history in which 99% of all combatants have been killed. Surely the Turkish people should be able to understand that. And when they do, then look at what's to come. He said, Khurujul Malhama, Khurujul Malhama, Fatul Constantinia. That the next event which will take place after Armageddon, after the Malhama, would be the conquest of Constantinople. He didn't say Istanbul, no. So, excuse me, uh, Mustafa Kemal, I have to use the name that my prophet used. He used the word Constantinople. And hence it is Sunnah to use the term or the name Constantinople. The name Constantinople therefore is dearer to a Muslim than the name Istanbul. In a choice between Constantinople and Istanbul, a Muslim must always choose the name Constantinople. Because our prophet used that name. I have come tonight to Belgrade to share this with you. And so the conquest of Constantinople has not as yet taken place. That is why I ask you to take this message please to the Turkish Muslims and to the Muslims of the Balkans. And when you take the message, take it gently. Take it gently to them that they might understand. A 600 years of brainwashing can be removed. 600 years is a long, long time. So you might need a lot of water and a lot of soap to wash away that brainwashing. The conquest of Constantinople prophesied by Prophet Muhammad, Allah's blessings be upon him, has not as yet taken place. It will take place after the Malhama. And when it takes place, then that's goodbye to NATO. I hope I don't offend anyone. When it takes place, when the conquest of Constantinople takes place, that's goodbye to NATO. And then he said, Fathul Constantinia, Khurujud Dajjal, that the Antichrist will emerge, if you will excuse the term, in person, after the conquest of Constantinople. And so now, the schoolboy should have known that the most important city in the world for a Christian in the end time is Jerusalem. The most important city in the world for a Jew in the end time is Jerusalem. The most important city in the world for a Muslim in the end time is Jerusalem. The American diplomatic service will agree with me because they have intelligent diplomats out there. That is sensible 
an intelligent and a wise way of dealing with the problem of Jerusalem was to work out a political arrangement for Jerusalem to be shared by all three faiths on the basis of political and religious equality and mutual respect. You must have mutual respect if you want to live together in one house. You can't be flying pots and pans all over the house and live together. How can you sleep? So on the basis of political equality and religious equality and mutual respect, you could have worked out a tripartite plural model of a city-state for Jerusalem. And that would have solved the problem. The Ottoman Empire did many bad things, but when they did something good, I must say it was good. Oh, yes. And the Ottoman Empire held Jerusalem for hundreds of years. And for hundreds of years they succeeded where the schoolboy could not in keeping all three faiths together to share Jerusalem in peace. The Ottomans did it. <coughs> and so now what has the schoolboy done? He's handed over Jerusalem to one faith, to one religion. Only to the Jews. And left the Christian and left the Muslim out in the cold. But guess what? They plan their plans. And he plans his plans. And he's the best of planners. And so now, it is inevitable, it is inevitable that that part of the Christian world which opposes what he has done. And do you know that the head of the Coptic church in Egypt who just cancelled <coughs> cancel an appointment he had with the vice president of the United States yes cancel it so there is a part of the Christian world which will oppose what Trump has done and there is a part of the Muslim world of course there are some Muslims who are excuse my language who are puppy dogs of Washington. But there is that part of the Muslim world which opposes what he has done. And so now, thank you, Mr. Trump, because now it is inevitable that that part of the Christian world and that part of the Christ Muslim world we still hold on to the truth and who want the truth to prevail in Jerusalem must now inevitably come together in greater understanding, in friendship, in solidarity and eventually in an alliance and praise is due to God. I pray that this book will help in that process. I don't want to take much more time tonight, but I do want to introduce you one more time to what the Quran has to say about the Christian people in the end time. Allah speaks in the fifth surah of the Quran, Surah Al-Ma'idah, and he says, I can only explain what, you, what he said, I can't translate, because no one can translate the word of God. No. <laughs> no. The word of God is miraculous. It cannot be translated. We can attempt to explain what he said. He said, لَتَجِدَنَّ 
In the Arabic grammar, this stands for both the present and the future. You will most certainly find at this time when the Quran is revealed and in time to come, Ashad al Nas, Adawatan lilladina amanul Yahud, that the Jews would be the most hostile people of all to you. And this took place, yes, at the time that the Quran was revealed. And it is taking place now when the president of Turkey accuses Israel of killing children. <laughs> Relentless oppression against the Muslim people and the Christian people. وَالَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا Not only would they be the most hostile of all, but another people who no longer worship God, no. <laughs> they, they now worship themselves. They have taken over from God in their civilization. They also will be the most hostile of all people to you. And at that time, and at that time, when the Jews are most hostile of all to you. And when these people are the most hostile of all to you, who turn away from the worship of the one God. Aqrabahum mawaddatan lilladhina amanu alladhina qalu inna nasara that you will find that those who are closest in love and affection for you. At that time when the Jews are the most hostile of all to you. Would be a people. The Quran does not say that they will be a Christian people. No. It says something else. What does it say? <laughs> He said they will be a people who will proclaim we are Christians. We are Christians. Meaning they've not been secularized. Their primary identity is their faith. Not their citizenship in the United States and we are French nationals and British nationals. No. We are Christians. That's the most important thing of all for us. Those Christians will be the closest in love and affection for you. This is the Quran. The Quran goes on to describe these Christian people who would be closest in love and affection for Muslims at the time when the Quran was revealed and in time to come when the Jews are most hostile of all to you. And that is because they are people who still have the institution of the priesthood. The priest is still a strategically important figure in their civilization. The institution of the priesthood and the church still plays a pivotally important role in their lives. Not that their churches are being sold to McDonald's hamburgers and to Kentucky Fry and another cathedral is now a bingo hall. Huh? No, 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 no. These are people whose hearts are still attached to the priesthood, to the church. Waruhbana, and these also are Christian people who have the institution of monasticism. The monastery is dear to them. 
And that's why Kosovo is so dear to their hearts. It is because the monastic way of life, the monastery, the monk, is still a part of the religious way of life. That could not be a Christian people who have abandoned monasticism and are now living a secular way of life. And finally, the Quran describes to us the Christian people who in the end time will be closest in love and affection to Muslims. And Allah says, وَأَنَّهُمْ لَا يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ they are not an arrogant people. No. They do not say we are the chosen people of the Lord God and all the rest of mankind are inferior to us. The law is only for us, not for them. These are a people who do not have the arrogance of wanting to rule the world. An imperial lust, Vladimir Putin described it, an imperial lust in their hearts. Not these Christian people. وَأَنَّهُمْ لَا يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ So when I look around and I ask, where are the Christian people? And I ask my Muslim brothers in the Balkans, and my Muslim brothers and sisters around the world. Where are those Christian people who in the end time will display these characteristics and who will eventually be closest in love and affection to Muslims? And I say to them, I can see only one people and they are the Orthodox Christian world. If you defer with me, if you say I am wrong, then you must tell me what is right. If I am wrong, tell me what is right. But they can't do it because I know that I am right. And praise is due to the Lord God. And so this book has a role to play in bringing our two peoples closer to each other. But what is written will come to pass regardless of me and regardless of you and regardless of those who want to criticize us and condemn us and oppose us. What is written will come to pass. If the Lord God has said that this is going to happen, It'll happen, and no one can stop it. And now finally, when that alliance comes into being, my opinion, and of course I can be wrong when I offer my opinion, yes, that Constantinople will be conquered by an alliance of Muslims and Orthodox Christians. And on that day, when Constantinople is conquered, I told you when I was here two years ago, and on that day we will return, Hagia Sophia. We return the cathedral Hagia Sophia to you. This is your cathedral. This was, this was shameful. This was malicious. This was sinful on the part of those who took a cathedral which had been a cathedral for 1,000 years and had been the most important cathedral in the world for those people. And you take that cathedral and convert it into a masjid to the eternal shame and disgrace of the world of Islam. On that day, when Constantinople is conquered, 
we will not only return that cathedral to you, but we will apologize to you for what was done. And on that day, the city will once again be Constantinople. And NATO, I have a message for you. I hope you're listening, NATO. On that day, the Russian Navy will be able to pass through the Bosphorus into the Mediterranean, and you cannot stop it. What happens after that is the conquest of Jerusalem, is the liberation of Jerusalem, is the final triumph of truth over falsehood, the final triumph of those who are faithful to truth, over those who betray the truth, who rewrite the truth, who clothe falsehood in the garments of truth, and who struggle with their falsehood with a mountain of lies and deception and injustice and oppression. On that day, they will be wiped off. And Jerusalem will be liberated and the truth will be triumphant. And the Christian and the Muslim will hold hands together. Will hold hands together as believers. And Jesus will be with us. First question. Uh, esoteric Islam uh, and uh, what uh, is the relationship of esoteric Islam to the heavenly hierarchy of Dionysius, the Areopagite. What is the relationship with, between Peter and Anasuka? الصوفية والمراتب السماوية يعني فلاك الديانات السماوية الصوفية والديانات السماوية وهذا اسم ديونيسيا على باجيتا يعني اسم أكيد من اسم أحد القصاوص أو أحد المفكرين يعني الصوفية والديانات السماوية and the Alam and Sawad. There is a question about the relationship between uh, esoteric Islam, which is uh, known as Sufism, and uh, the uh, cosmological order, the cosmological order, the, the different worlds of space and time which are beyond the material universe. Hmm? Um, I began my lecture by suggesting that secular scholarship is inadequate to explain, to penetrate the reality of the world today. And I suggested gently so <laughs> because uh, I'm in a university, that scholarship, which is based on the revealed word of God, religious scholarship, would have a capacity to penetrate reality and to explain reality in a manner that secular scholarship cannot. Let me give you an example. Last night, you had a dream. You do dream in Belgrade, don't you? And in your dream, you saw your neighbor's house on fire, burning down. That's last night. And then today, at 10 o'clock in the morning, lo and behold, fire in your neighbor's house and it was burnt down and you said to your mother 
Mama, I saw this last night. Does this happen? Can you have a dream of something which is not as yet occurred and then you see it happen? Yes, of course. Secular scholarship cannot explain such a dream. But religious scholarship can do it because we have a cosmology. We recognize the existence of universes beyond our material universe. It's called the Samawat. And that events exist before they occur. Events exist before they occur. Events exist before they occur. And this is why the prophets of God could say that in the end times this will happen and that will happen and the other thing will happen. And that there will be the Antichrist who has a PhD in deception. You know that, don't you? He, come, he comes with two things. He comes with a river and a fire, the Antichrist, the Jab. He comes with a river and a fire. But his river is a fire. And his fire is the cool waters of a river. In, this is symbolic, symbolic language, indicating that he takes the road to heaven and makes it look like the road to hell. And he takes the road to hell and he makes it look like the road to heaven every night on television. <laughs> Our prophet said that this will come to pass. So it is because of our recognition of the existence of other worlds of space and time beyond the material universe. And that events can exist before they occur. That it is possible for religious scholarship to penetrate reality in a manner that secular scholarship is inadequate to do. Thank you. Thank you. We have a fantastic question. There you go. Here. We have a fantastic question. I hope da ćemo bar uspeti da zagrebemo površinu tih tema koje se ovde pokreću. Pre svega, jedan komentar, više nego pitanje, kaže, mnogo hvala na kosmičkom božanskom glasu istinske unifikacije. Salem aleikum. There is a comment here, rather than a question. Many thanks on your cosmic divine voice of true unification. Salam alaikum. Sledeće pitanje je šta gospodin Šejk misli o sadašnjem vođi Čečena Kadirovu? What does the Šejk think about the Čečen leader Kadirovu? Sure. Any Muslim people who make the mistake of taking weapons from Santa Claus and taking US dollars from Santa Claus to wage a bogus jihad are misguided. But Santa Claus succeeded in Syria, 
He succeeded in Iraq. He succeeded in Libya. <laughs> in fooling many Muslims. And they were deceived. And they took the weapons. And they took the US dollars. And they went to wage a bogus jihad. When a Muslim people open their eyes and recognize that this is wrong, that we were deceived, that we should not take weapons and money from Santa Claus to wage a bogus jihad, then we commend such a Muslim people. This is certainly what happened in Chechenia. And we are happy that a leadership has emerged in Chechenia which is no longer aligned with Santa Claus. What do you think about the role of Syria? Следеќе питање е шта мислите о Руској помоћи Сирији и дали би резултат у Сирији био исти без Руске интервенције? What do you think about the Russian help to Syria and would the outcome have been the same if the Russians had not intervened? I have to commend uh, President Vladimir Putin and the Russian government who displayed amazing courage, much less courage, indescribable courage to risk nuclear war in their military intervention in Syria. I don't know where they got that courage from. It had to be from the spiritual heart that Russia still has while Russia's enemies have hearts which are barbarian. If Russia had not intervened, and intervened with the determination and skill with which it did, then Syria would have become another Libya. And more importantly, the Christian people of Syria would have been slaughtered. And I could not be here in Belgrade today they would have achieved their objective. That the massacre of the Armenians would have been repeated one more time. To ensure that a wedge is driven between the world of Islam and the world of Orthodox Christianity, that they can never, never come together. The Christians of Syria would have been slaughtered to sabotage any possibility of an end time friendship and alliance between Muslims and Orthodox Christians. But they plan their plans and he plans his plans and we thank him for Russia's intervention. Thank you, Shay. Samo jedan mali komentar. Ja sam iz Amerike. Možete biti sigurni da vaši vršnjaci, kolege, pre svega ne bi mogli da prate predavanje na stranom jeziku, a zatim ne bi mogli da postavljaju ovako kvalitetna pitanja. Tako da ću posle da predložim šejku da na sva vaše pitanja, ne možemo sva da tretiramo večeras, ali da on odgovori na sva vaše pitanja i možda da postavi na svoj website ili tako nešto. Okay, the next question is, what is the message of love with which we can bring people back into belonging to the one true God and remove the hate based on ignorance? A heart which is filled with hatred for that which the Lord God hates. That's a good heart. 
But if you love that which he hates, then your heart is corrupted. <laughs> he loves justice. And if you find injustice in the world, then you must hate injustice. If you do not hate injustice and you do not hate oppression and instead you love the oppressor, wait and see what he'll do with you. So love is only for those whom he loves and not for everyone. And you must hate whom he hates and not everyone. That heart which loves what the God, the Lord God loves and hates that which the Lord God hates, that heart is a good heart. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Kia kre leta islamik isi isis the other one e pakwa selongu who created the Islamic State and why what is your opinion? Oh, that's an easy question. <laughs> Everybody knows it's Santa Claus. <laughs> it's Santa Claus, yeah. <laughs> He comes to the reindeer and, and there are packages looking like, like Christmas gifts, but inside there are machine guns <laughs> and ammunition and bullets. <laughs> He's transporting it to those who are going to wage the bogus jihad. That's ISIS. It took a long time for them to prepare for ISIS. Oh yes, years of planning, years of planning. And they did it with incredible skill. It started with the, the corruption of the Christian religion when part of Christianity became Protestant. By Protestant, we mean that they understand the word of God literally. That's it. There is nothing to be interpreted. There is no need for spiritual insight in reading the word of God. No. Just the literal word is enough. Once you accept that kind of scholarship, that kind of methodology, then Santa Claus can make you dance to every tune he wants you to dance. Because you have eyes and yet cannot see. And they succeeded. They call themselves Salafi. Muslims and uh, some of them have become my students having realized that the Salafi methodology is defective and inadequate and that the word of God cannot be understood only literally that there are other parts of the word of God which have to be interpreted and interpretation requires spiritual insight and spiritual insight, insight requires light, no, no, light from God. Every Christian knows that. So that's how they created ISIS. It is Protestant Islam. <laughs> from the... From the <laughs> From the bowels of Protestant Islam came ISIS. Hmm? And also, since they, look, they can only see up to their noses, they can't see beyond that. Their hearts are filled with hatred. Whoever Santa Claus wants them to hate, they hate. 
And whoever Santa Claus wants them to love, they love. And the mask has now been taken off the face of Saudi Arabia. Have you noticed? Yes? The mask that was hiding the Saudi face has now been taken off. And now Santa Claus has taken control of Saudi Arabia as well. Sada imamo jedno tehničko pitanje, da se tako izrazim. U posljednjim vremenima po Kuranu, kakva je uloga veštačke inteligencije? What is the role of the artificial intelligence in the end times, according to the Kuran? Yeah, good question. Whoever asks that question, good question. Important question. I have something to share with you. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He informed us that He called Solomon, Nabi Sulaiman alayhi salam, to experience something which caused him distress, fitna. It appears to me to have been a vision. And when Solomon saw what he saw in the vision, he recoiled with fright. What did he see? وَأَلْقَيْنَا عَلَىٰ كُرْسِيهِ جَسَدْ That the Lord God cast or placed on the throne of King Solomon a lifeless body, jasad, a body without life, without a soul, without a self, without a soul, or spirit without a self, or an empty shell. When it is a human being who is sitting on a throne, it has to be a human body. But if it is gold that you melt in the form of a calf, then it will be a golden calf, just had that, with no soul, no spirit, no self. Having seen this lifeless body on his throne, this jasad, Solomon then asked for something. But you know, whenever you want to ask for anything from the Lord God, you must first seek forgiveness and then ask. Hmm? So he sought forgiveness and then he asked. What did he ask for? Listen carefully. He said, Wahabri Mulkan la yambagi li ahadim in ba'di. Grant me a kingdom that this kingdom of mine may not belong to any after me. May not belong to any after me. So it is clear that he understood that what he saw in that vision was that that fellow sitting on his throne would one day seek to take control of holy Israel and claim that this is holy Israel over which he rules. And therefore I came to the conclusion that that Jasad is the Antichrist or the job. Now then, implication. If it is just an empty shell of a body with no spirit and no self, then when it speaks and when it acts, it does on the basis of external programming. This is a being who is externally programmed. That's artificial 
intelligence. And so you can close your eyes now. You can close your eyes now and anticipate that artificial intelli intelligence is going to take over the world tomorrow. And your children will no longer have their feet planted in the real world. They will not live in the concrete world. No, they'll be transported to a fantasy world. They don't use the term fantasy world, they call it the virtual world. A make-believe world. And once you are you divorced or detached from the real world, he can make you dance to any tune he plays. Još, još nekoliko pitanja, teško je, znate, sva su dobra. Teološki i sociološki gledano, kakva je razlika između Turaka i Arapa? Theologically and sociologically speaking, what is the difference between the Turks and the Arabs? I don't have scholarship in ethnology. <laughs> I don't have that capacity to distinguish between different ethnic groups and I don't see a need for that because the Lord God created us the way he created the flowers in the flower garden. Are the flowers all the same color? Have you seen a flower garden in which all the colors are the same, all the flowers are the same color? No, not as beautiful as a garden in which there is a multiplicity of flowers, a multiplicity of colors, a multiplicity, multiplicity of shapes. This is Allah's creation. وَجَعَلْنَكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلًا he created us with diversity, different nations, different tribes, different colors. But it is arrogance. It is arrogance to say that one tribe is superior to the other. Because my skin is this color and your skin is that color. That I was born superior. I have a birthright of superiority. The Lord God created me to be superior. That rubbish is what is there in Jerusalem now. That rubbish has to be washed away. Thank you. Uh, sljedeće pitanje da li će doći do izgradnje trećeg hrama uh, will the third temple be constructed the Quran has spoken on this subject uh, in a chapter of surah entitled the Israelite people chapter number 17 and it speaks of the Israelite people committing wickedness committing wickedness in the land meaning the Holy Land on two occasions facade is that which corrupts to the extent that it can destroy facade mm. The Quran says that the Lord God gave the Holy Land to them, the Israelite people. The Quran says that the Lord God gave the Holy Land to the Israelite people. How come the New York Times doesn't publish that on front page? Huh? How come CNN doesn't say that every single day, morning, noon and night, that the Quran says? 
that the Lord God gave the Holy Land to the Israelite people. It's there in the Quran. The reason why they would not say it is because the land was not given to them unconditionally. That's why. There were conditions attached to the grant of the land and they know that. And every time they violated the condition, the Lord God threw them out. This land is yours on the condition that you have faith in the Lord God and you are righteous in conduct. And to declare that you are the chosen people and the rest of mankind are like cockroaches, that's arrogance. That's not righteousness. And so the first time they were wicked in their conduct, and the Lord God threw them out. And they were taken to Babylon. But then he allowed them to come back. And the second time around, again they were wicked in their conduct. And they acknowledged, they acknowledged this. But the second time, when they were expelled from the land, the temple was destroyed as it was destroyed the first time by the Lord God. But the second time around when they were expelled, the Quran says that they were broken up into bits and pieces and scattered all over the world. And then for 2,000 years, there was a ban on them. They could never return. 2,000 years. They could not return. Allah placed a ban on them. But then the Quran went on to say, that they will be able to return only when Gog and Magog are released. And Gog and Magog have indestructible power. And when they spread out in all directions with their indestructible power and they establish the world order of Gog and Magog, then you will see the Israelite people being brought back to Jerusalem. You'll be brought back to the Holy Land. But what will happen when they come back to the Holy Land? Listen to the words of the Quran. <laughs> it's so few and yet so much in them. وَإِنْ عُدْتُمْ عُدْنَا وَإِنْ عُدْتُمْ Hudna, two words, that's all. If you return with your wicked conduct when you are in the Holy Land, we will return with our punishment. It will be an act of wickedness to destroy the house of God, the Masjid al Aqsa, to rebuild a temple. It will be a, an act of wickedness to deny us the freedom to worship in the house of God. <laughs> so yes, we anticipate that this is what they will try to do. They will say perhaps it's an earthquake and then the masjid will be demolished. But the first time there was just a fire, that's all. A fire in the masjid in 1969. August 1969, a fire in the masjid, and the wall of Islam, which had been, which had been demoralized with the destruction of the caliphate, and broken up into bits and pieces, <coughs> immediately came together in a summit conference in Rabat in Morocco. Yeah, 
And then when Eri and Sharon went into the masjid with his shoes on, with a thousand Israeli soldiers, with their shoes on, when God had said to Moses, Moses, you are in the Holy Valley, take off your shoes. Take off your shoes. And they went into the masjid with their shoes on. It provoked the intifada. <laughs> it provoked the intifada. So can you imagine? Now that Trump has done what he has done. Today, there was an Islamic summit conference in Istanbul. So if the Masjid Al-Aqsa is destroyed, ever destroyed, to rebuild the temple, you can imagine what's going to happen in the world of Islam. Yes. Sheikh Imran Hussein, thank you for your friendship. This, that's the most precious thing to me. Thank you for your insights and for your wisdom and for sharing it with the students uh, at the Faculty of Law in Belgrade tonight. Uh, uh, the book is available. Knjiga je ovde na ovom stočiću. Izvolite, pogledajte i koga zanima možete napaviti. Hvala vam što ste došli večera.